This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday. I'm wearing a nice red uh, t-shirt for uh, December and uh, we'll be featuring December birthdays for the most part. The first uh, birthday for one December is Betty Midler. She was named by her mother for Betty Davis. And uh, she was an actress born in 1945 on the 1st of December. She played uh, in Fiddler on the Roof. I think that was her very first uh, play that she was in, a musical, of course. And she played Seidel in that uh, comedy. For uh, December 2nd, we have Ruth Draper. Born in New York City in 1984, also an actress, but she's famous for monologues. And uh, she uh, does these monologues using 54 different characters. She can, she can do 54 different characters in her monologues. December 3rd is a death date. It's a death date of Mary Baker Eddy. Mary Baker Eddy, uh, who died in 1910 in Massachusetts, was uh, the founder of the Christian Science Denomination, a special uh, religious group uh, with calling uh, America its uh, founding place for Christian science, and uh, she emphasized that uh, in his ministry, Jesus uh, frequently healed people. It mentions uh, several famous occasions where uh, Jesus said, get up and walk, you know, to uh, someone who was crippled, and they did. So the whole idea was through religion to um, heal people. She died in 1910, and she was the founder not only of the Christian science religion, but also of a newspaper, which is still out today, the Christian Science Monitor, founded in 1908. For December 4th, this is also a death day, we have Karen Horney. She died in New York City in 1952. She was a, a doctor and um, specialized in psychiatry, actually. In fact, she had her own special kind of psychiatry. She was a uh, had once been a student of uh, Freud, who is, of course, a very famous uh, psychiatrist. But uh, she later broke with Freud and uh, essentially set up her own uh, kind of psychiatry. She died, as I mentioned, in 1952 on December 4th. December 5th is the birth date, no, pardon me, that's a death date, actually, of Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley was a black woman born in Africa. She was a, a slave, but she uh, died in America because she came to America in the 18th century. She died in Boston in 1784. Now, she was a famous poet in her time. It is said that uh, General George Washington, later President uh, Washington, um, liked her poetry quite a bit. She was, uh, interestingly enough, unfortunately, after the death of her master, uh, she married a free black man and had children. And that wasn't unfortunate, but what was unfortunate that when her husband was arrested for debt, uh, she and her three children 
starved to death. She was um, freed, but she was the, a servant in the house of a, some people who uh, apparently used her services, but they did not uh, pay her enough money to feed herself and her children properly. But she is remembered as the first black person who had a book published, which was a book of her poetry, Phyllis Wheatley. For uh, this 5th of uh, December, we have birth date again. This is uh, Delia Akeley, Delia Akeley of uh, Wisconsin, uh, born in 1875. Now, you might think that because she's shown, well, actually she's shown here with a big elephant, right? She was a taxidermist. She and her husband both, both were taxidermists. And um, they went to Africa and hunted wild game, shot them and uh, mounted them, you know, stuffed them and mounted them and so on. And this shows her with an elephant that she shot. And in fact, they say that uh, an elephant that she shot and mounted is still on, in a museum in Chicago. Uh, Delia Akeley, born about 1875. I guess she was one of those women who was pretty coy about uh, her birth and her birth date. For December 6th, we have Catherine Cadier, a French woman born in uh, 1709. Now, she was uh, uh, featured in a famous trial in 1731. She was tried as a witch. You know, that was still a time when they were looking for, uh, especially women, witches. Uh, and um, of course, they sometimes caught a bad guy who was a wizard, but uh, we still remember the witches. And in fact, our president uh, talks about <laughs> Uh, fake witch, <laughs> witch hunts nowadays, right? Um, Catherine Cadier, born in 1709, was tried as a witch in 1731. And um, she, she was denounced by a bishop. Well, uh, turned out they put both of them on trial. And if they had... Uh, if, if they had been uh, condemned officially as, as witches, they uh, would have been killed, the woman would have been hanged, and the man would have been burned at the stake, apparently. However, luckily, um, the witch trial uh, didn't uh, come to a conclusion like that. But uh, Catherine Cadier is known for uh, being involved with the most famous trial in all of France and all of French history, except for the famous Dreyfus Affair, which occurred almost two centuries later. December 7th is the birthday of Willa Cather, American author. This uh, famous author uh, was born in Virginia in 1873. And she wrote about and was herself a strong woman. And uh, she uh, wrote uh, several books that are still read today. I remember reading them as a, a girl myself long ago. One was Death Comes to the Archbishop. That was uh, probably her best known book. But she also wrote a book called My Antonia, which uh, was about uh, a woman um, who supposedly lived and grew up in her own um, Middle West, far Middle West uh, area of uh, America. Willa Cather still read, I believe, 
probably in uh, schools. We, we read her course long ago when I was a girl. Number uh, eight, 8 December, is the birthday of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots. And here's a picture of the Queen of Scots. She was born in 1542, but uh, she was actually raised in France, and uh, she considered French basically her first language because she had been sent there to be educated when she was only five years old. When she grew up, she uh, married uh, a prince, a French prince, who later became a king of France, but only very briefly. And she was just a young woman, just a teenager at the time. But she did uh, serve as queen of France for about a year. And uh, then her husband died. And instead of staying in France where she was uh, appreciated, she went back to Scotland and uh, she fell into problems with Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I uh, was uh, rather afraid of her because she, uh, Mary Queen of Scots that is, was the first person who would have been the heir of the throne of England if Elizabeth never uh, married and had uh, children. So uh, when she was having some problems in Scotland, Mary uh, made the mistake of going into England where she was actually imprisoned for 19 years in the Tower of London by uh, Queen Elizabeth and her successors. So that was uh, not too good a thing. And after the 19 years were up, she was executed. Um, her head was cut off um, because of the fears of the people who, would, <laughs> who were also in line to be uh, the people to follow Elizabeth. So that was the end of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, born in 1542. In, uh, for the December the 9th, we have Grace Hopper, born in New York City in 1906. We don't uh, have a picture of her, as it turns out, but um, she uh, co-wrote Kobel. I thought maybe we did have a picture of her, but I guess not. Um, Kobel, and she was in the waves. She was, um, in fact, uh, Grace Hopper, was at the end, uh, toward the end of her life, the oldest naval officer in the U.S. Navy at age 77. Grace Hopper was still around, and as I say, she, she wrote uh, uh, something on, for the Internet, which today we call COBOL, or at least she was involved with those who, who developed uh, that uh, Internet language. Our uh, next person is Emily Dickinson. And here we have a picture of Emily Dickinson, born in Massachusetts in 1830. She was a famous poet, but uh, during her lifetime, um, it was not realized. I mean, she was just known as a house person, house body, someone who never married, stayed at home. Uh, mostly in Massachusetts, although her father did serve in Congress at one point, and she visited in Washington, D.C. But um, Emily Dickinson was uh, writing poetry, and her, her sister and, and sister-in-law, you know, close relatives, uh, kept, knew that she had all these poems. And it was after her death that actually uh, probably the most famous uh, American woman poet, Emily Dickinson, it was after her death that her poetry was
published for the first time. For the 11th of uh, December, Annie Jump Cannon, born in Delaware in 1863, was an astronomer. She um, served as an astronomer in uh, Harvard, and that, that was at a time in which they had a number of women who uh, served as astronomers in Harvard. I don't know what the point was. Um, maybe the men were just not uh, that interested in astronomy in those days or something. But um, Annie Jump Cannon developed uh, a way of finding out the chemical analysis of stars, you know, uh, with, by inventing what they call a spectroscope. The spectroscope can determine by the analyzing the light of a given star what its chemistry actually is, you know, how much of it is hydrogen. Most stars are mainly hydrogen, according to the astronomy course I had a number of years ago. But uh, they have other um, elements as well in them, that each element has its own specific light. And the spectroscope can analyze the chemistry of the stars. And that's what Annie Jump Cannon was involved with, the development, finding this chemical analysis of stars. She was um, handicapped in a certain way, but it did not bother uh, her uh, analysis of stars at all, of course, and that was that she was almost per permanently deaf. Um, number 12, the uh, 12th of December, has been assigned to a woman called Linda Brandt. Uh, don't think we have a picture of her either. She was a southern slave and um, she um, was being threatened by her master who was uh, trying to get her in bed with him and she finally uh, ran away up to the north. She escaped to the north. That was Linda Brent. As I say, she was assigned to the 12th of December because uh, the maker of our book, remember the ladies, did not have a specific date for her, her birth. December the 13th is a death date, the death date of Grandma Moses. Grandma Moses, the picture shows her on the cover of Time magazine, as you can see. Uh, she was... Uh, a famous painter, and um, I can remember, you know, that uh, um, she was just coming to notice in the 1930s when she was already in, in her 80s. She died at uh, 101, but um, she first came to fame uh, in the late 1930s. They say that she uh, did 1,500 paintings. As a matter of fact, uh, an art critic who found a number of her paintings on sale at a, you know, just a sort of a corner grocery store in New England, uh, bought all the paintings that she had there, like a dozen or so, and uh, made her famous and she was over 80 when that happened. Grandma Moses died uh, at 101 on December 13th. For the 14th of December, Charlotte Stanley, Countess of Derby. Um, she was, uh, as you can tell by the painting of her, she was a person of the 17th century. She had a home called Latham House, which was uh, besieged during uh, the English uh, Civil War in the 17th century. In 1643 specifically, it was besieged. 
and um, she was the person who was there. Her husband was actually uh, working with uh, the monarchy in London at the time, but um, she and, and the servants uh, protected the house at Derby, often called Derby here, but Derby in England, and uh, uh, successfully uh, kept the besiegers off. However, um, a year later she went away uh, to join her husband in London, and at that time the uh, house, Latham House, was taken in 1645. Charlotte Stanley, Countess of Derby. For um, the 15th of December, we see Eleanor Smith. Eleanor Smith, uh, born in New York City in 1917. And we see her with her pilot outfit on and her airplane in the background. She was a record-breaking female pilot in the 1920s. Uh, well, probably um, that seems a little uh, <laughs> soon. If she was born in 1917, I may have made a mistake here on these uh, figures. For the 16th of December, we have a famous uh, English authoress Jane Austen. Jane Austen um, was uh, born in 1779 uh, and um, no, 1775 in Hampshire in England and of course she wrote a series of novels, famous novels, still read today. In fact, they're probably more appreciated today than they were when, when they were first published. Uh, she did not sign them, she was a modest person, but three of her famous books were uh, definitely um, published during her lifetime and earned her as much as 400 pounds. Since then, they've, um, she's had sales in the millions because of uh, the books she wrote Pride and Prejudice is probably the best known one, but she also wrote Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, and a number of other books. Um, but as I say, they were published, those three at least, uh, were published without her name on them during her own lifetime. And she did earn some money for, for it, as much as 400 pounds, which was probably a lot of money back in, in the day that they were published in the early 19th century. But um, Pride and Prejudice has been made, in, for instance, into the to movies uh, at least twice uh, during the time I've been around, plus probably uh, at least one uh, regular uh, being shown on TV, uh, actually um, a drama on TV, Pride and Prejudice, but um, still read, still appreciated. She had a very uh, sly and uh, humor to her, I thought, and they're really enjoyable books. She was probably before her time, Jane Austen. Uh, with books like Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. She never married, and that was at a time when, you know, being an old maid was uh, considered really a sort of a fate worse than death for uh, women in the middle class, like she was, and, and uh, living with their family, you know, your whole life, and and just being the old maid aunt. But uh, Jane Austen's name is still popular, and her works are probably as popular as they ever were today. 
For the 17th of December, Deborah Sampson, uh, born in Massachusetts in 1760. Now, uh, she fought in the American Revolution as a man. I mean, you know, she dressed up like a man. In fact, she dressed up like a man in order to join the military and uh, join her husband. But she was uh, known as uh, Shirtlift. Well, that was her, the name she took as a man. And uh, she successfully portrayed a man and worked as a soldier in the American Revolution. And uh, in fact, uh, finally, uh, someone discovered that she was a woman. You know, she, was, she got real sick one time and the doctor who, who took over discovered that she was not a man, but a woman. And uh, she was actually, after the American Revolution, she was pensioned. She received a pension from the um, U.S. government because she had served uh, honorably in the American Revolution. And in fact, uh, the man that she married and who survived her was her widower. He inherited the pension, you know, in those days. Well, even today, uh, pensions can be inherited by the wife, surviving wife. Well, um, they gave uh, her husband a pension. But what do you imagine? Uh, sexism still followed right along. They gave the pension to him at twice the rate that they had paid her during her lifetime. So <laughs> uh, that's an odd bit of uh, sexism from um, uh, the early days of the uh, U.S. government for us. Now, um, the next person, is, uh, the, uh, December 18th, is a death date for a, a fairly unknown person, at least unknown here in, Fran here in the U.S., because this was a French woman named Desle La Monsense in France. Well, she lived so long ago, we obviously don't have a picture of her, um, 1529, she died aged 27. She was uh, accused as a witch in 1529 in France and died on December 18th in 1529, aged 27. As a, she was not um, hung as a witch, but she was hung as a for heresy, for not following um, the faith properly, and uh, for renouncing Catholicism. But um, she was remembered <laughs> for uh, one of those witches back in the day in the 16th century. December 19th is the birthday in Massachusetts in 1820 of Mary Rice Livermore. I think we do have a picture of Mary Rice Livermore. There she is. She was uh, the wife of a Universalist minister and a very active person in the 19th century. She headed, you know, she was the president of four different uh, suffrage uh, and uh, temperance organizations during her lifetime. And she also served in the American Civil War as a nurse. So she was a, a well-known person in her own uh, day in the 19th century, Mary Rice Livermore for December 19th. For December 20th, Maud Gaughan, a famous beauty of the day, 
Uh, maybe this doesn't show her to her very best, but uh, she was definitely a famous beauty in her day. In fact, I have a picture of her in my book, which is more gorgeous than what you're seeing up there for her, but that was the one that we saw that looked the best that we could choose from. She was born in 1865 in she was born in London, but she lived most of her life in Ireland, especially in Dublin. She was um, in Dublin society in Ireland and a famous beauty. Six feet tall, the poet William Butler Yeats uh, loved her at a distance. She didn't actually ever marry, I don't believe, but she was a spokesperson for Irish independence and uh, she kept right up with that like I say and she was a very uh, striking personage at six feet tall and so beautiful and uh, she continued pressing for the independence of Ireland from uh, the English all during her lifetime. The 21st of December is the death date for Anzia Jezierska. I hope, uh, hope I'm not uh, uh, mispronouncing this name too much. Jezierska, yes. She died in Ontario in 1970 at age 90, which means that she was born in 1880. She was an author. Uh, she was uh, not born in Canada. She was actually a Jewish immigrant in the United States at one time. And uh, she was an author who uh, wrote books about, especially about Jews and um, uh, Jewish immigrants, both uh, in the US and Canada. But um, after leaving the uh, group of, of immigrants that she grew up with, she gradually lost her inspiration uh, for writing about the Jewish immigrant society because she had moved out of Jewish immigrant society eventually. But she was a well-known author during her lifetime. On December 22nd, that's the birthday in 1853, in Venezuela of Teresa Carreño. This shows her as an elderly person, Teresa Carreño, born in Venezuela. But she was a piano prodigy, and she um, played piano for Abraham Lincoln, actually. As it says, she was born in 1853, so if she played for Abraham Lincoln, that would have been when she was seven or eight years old. But we have a picture of her because she was a career piano player all her life, starting as a piano prodigy. She died in 1917. December 23rd is uh, the uh, birthday of Sarah Bredlow Walker, probably better known as uh, Madam Walker. She was uh, born in 1867. She was the first black woman millionaire. She made uh, her money in cosmetics, especially cosmetics, for black people, hair oil, uh, hair straightener, and so on. And that's how she got to be a millionaire, uh, Madam Walker. For um, the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, here's someone who was actually assigned. I guess they didn't find a, a woman who was born on Christmas Eve. Uh, to put in the, the uh, book, 
but this uh, assigned person is Loretta Velazquez. Loretta Velazquez of Cuba. And uh, I don't think we have a picture of her either because she was born in 1842. She fought uh, battles uh, in Cuba. She was uh, one of the people who opposed uh, Spanish rule in Cuba. And uh, she wrote a book in 1876 called The Women in Battle. In fact, she, I believe, headed a, a group of women who uh, fought Spanish rule. But they didn't know her, her birth date specifically, so they just gave her, assigned her to the 24th of December. For the 25th of December, we have Clara Barton. Clara Barton, um, the famous um, founder in America of the Red Cross. She was a nurse uh, during the Civil War. She was born in 1821 in Massachusetts. And of course, uh, after the American Civil War, she took a trip to Europe where they had uh, founded a group called uh, the Red Cross to uh, help people, especially people who were hurt in, in uh, wartime. And uh, when she returned home, Clara Barton founded uh, the Red Cross in America. But she, as I mentioned, had already served as a nurse during the Civil War in this country, which was um, in the 1860s. For the 26th of December, we have Mary Somerville, born in Scotland in 1780. She was a mathematician, uh, a scientist, and of course, uh, probably the, you might say the first woman, um, well-known woman scientist in S Scotland in uh, 1780 as a mathematician and, and uh, a scientist generally. But uh, she was also a wife and mother, or considered a very good person um, at home. And so she was someone who was able to combine a career in mathematics uh, with uh, being a good wife and mother. Mary Somerville for December 26th. The 27th of December is the birth date of Marlena Dietrich. Born in, born in Berlin in 1901, a famous uh, German actress who um, left to Germany during the Hitler time, came to the United States and eventually became an American citizen. So she was famous uh, not only for her uh, interesting female face, but also uh, for her legs. Um, it was said that uh, at one time a poster that showed her with her famous legs uh, had to be taken down in New York City, I guess it was, because, um, it, you know, there was this poster there and it was, men were spending so much time uh, looking at the poster of her legs that they uh, missed their, <laughs> their, their uh, rides or uh, somehow caused a problem in the subways and her poster had to be taken down. But uh, she also uh, played in uh, pictures and she entertained the troops. She was also supposedly loved by famous men, you know, a whole bunch of men who um, uh, thought a lot of her, but uh, she didn't marry any of them, uh, Marlena Dietrich. For the 28th of December, that's a death date for Joanna South, Southcott. Joanna Southcott uh, died in London in 1814. She wrote uh, some 59 books and she was a well-known evangelist. She um, 
uh, claimed that uh, she was pregnant by God when she was a quite ancient lady already, you know, like in her 60s, which is well beyond the time that most women are even uh, able to have children. Uh, but um, she wrote all these books and uh, had a lot of followers who called themselves South Cottians. And uh, that would have been in the late 18th century since she died in 1814, age 64. December 29th is the birth date of Elizabeth II of Russia. Now, I think we got a picture of Elizabeth II. Here we, here we do. We had a hard time uh, getting past Elizabeth II of England, which had many, many, many pictures on the Internet. But this uh, is Elizabeth II of Russia. And um, she was born in 1709, the illegitimate daughter of Peter the Great of Russia. But um, he married the mother, making his daughter Elizabeth uh, 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 legitimate, legal, when she was just a, a, still a toddler. And uh, she did follow uh, as, uh, as uh, the Tsarina of uh, Russia, as Elizabeth II, for a number of years in the 18th century. Um, for the 30th of December, we have Angela Burdett Coutts. This was a death date, actually, in London of Angela Burdett Coutts at age 92. Now, when she was just a very young woman in her early 20s, her grandmother, who was one of the most uh, wealthy women in all of England died and left all her money to this uh, favorite granddaughter, Angela. And um, she inherited this great wealth, some three million pounds or so. And she became a well-known philanthropist. She uh, spent a lot of her money uh, helping other people. And so it's said that she, uh, had $3 million worth of donations during her, her lifetime. It was made famous as a philanthropist. For the 31st of December, Elizabeth Arden, um, and she was born in Ontario in Canada, they think in 1878. Now, she, apparently she was one of those women who would never own up to how old she was or tell anybody her age. So they think she was born in 1878. She died in 1966. And in the meantime, she had um, become a very wealthy woman uh, by selling cosmetics. Now, at the time that she was born, most women didn't wear cosmetics. That was back in the 19th century uh, before the, and before the First World War. Most women did not wear cosmetics. But uh, along came Elizabeth Arden and started making lipsticks and, and mascara and so on. And, and a lot of women began wearing uh, cosmetics of various kinds. Powder had been around for quite a long time, but not mascara and lipstick until basically, I'd say, after the First World War, um, uh, cosmetics for women became much more uh, popular. So she was a cosmetics revolutionary, actually, and she was a rival of Helena Rubinstein, who was another cosmetics uh, company uh, holder. And as a matter of fact, an ex-husband of uh, Elizabeth Arden, um, after he became the ex-husband of Elizabeth Arden, uh, uh, went to work <laughs> for Helena Rubinstein. 
that I suppose was was a really sharp uh, uh, kind of uh, revenge on his ex-wife uh, for him to to go to work for her rival Helena Rubinstein, but Elizabeth Arden herself was the December 31st birthday. She lived well into the 20th century and saw uh, cosmetics become very, very popular across, uh, uh, well, Europe as a, and, and America uh, in the 1920s and uh, since, almost a hundred years now, that cosmetics have been uh, popular with women. Also on December 31st, we have a modern woman, someone born in 1995. Her name is Gabby Douglas. We have a picture of her. As you can see, she is a, an athlete, a black woman athlete, uh, who's only a little over 20 years old. She's in her 20s. She's a gymnast, and she was Olympic gold medal winner. Uh, she won three Olympic gold medals in 2012 when the Olympics was on. And uh, in 2011 and 2015, she was on the gymnastics team for the U.S. that won gold medal. So Gabby Day Douglas is a well-known gymnast. Now, um, we're going to jump back for a minute here to December 11th to show you Rita Moreno. Um, there was someone else on the 11th, namely Annie Jump Cannon, the astronomer, uh, was born on December 11th, but uh, in my more modern book, uh, that I have that shows uh, women since uh, the mid-90s. Um, Rita Moreno is featured. She was the first Latina woman uh, to win, uh, maybe Latina period, first Latina. Uh, maybe there weren't uh, Latin uh, gentlemen involved, but uh, she won an Emmy a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. <laughs> That's all four of the famous uh, uh, awards to actresses. And uh, she's one of 12 people who got all four, but uh, she was the first with a Latin background to win all four of the awards for women. For, for people in general. <laughs> Grammy, Emmy, Oscar, and Tony. All four, wow. So those are our people for uh, December, uh, our uh, women and their birthdays. I also have a uh, t-shirt to show you. And the uh, front of the t-shirt shows um, Orchard House, Alcott, it says, and Concord, Massachusetts. You can read that on the screen. That is the home of Louisa May Alcott, the uh, famous writer of children's books in the 19th century. I uh, visited uh, Alcott House in Concord, Massachusetts some years ago and got this t-shirt and it has a really great back to it as well which I think Matt has a picture of and you notice what it says. You know Louisa May Alcott wrote the book Little Women and uh, still read I guess by mostly by girls. Uh, it certainly was in my time although obviously that was maybe 70 years ago or so, but her best known work, Louisa May Alcott's best known work, is Little Women. And I think this is a really great 
uh, slogan for us to remember. Little women grow up to be great women. And uh, we try to uh, feature great women on uh, this uh, show. Of course, there are some uh, people who are infamous, some women who are infamous, and we, we mention them too. Mostly they are uh, the minority because most women are not. Most women are great women for good reason, not for being uh, bad people. So let's uh, believe that little women grow up to be great women, and I think it's very nice that we have this green, although very light green, uh, T-shirt to show you. And it actually has very dark green um, printing on it. Little women grow up to be great women. And uh, featuring Louisa May Alcott. Louisa May Alcott wrote other books, you know, besides Little Women. She wrote Little Men as well, um, which was about the little women's sons for the most part, as I recall it. It's been a long time since I read Little Men, and I didn't read it as often as I read Little Women, but she wrote others, too. She wrote um, Rose in Bloom. Uh, she wrote one, I think it was called something like Lilac Time. And she wrote Eight Cousins, which was uh, about a family. Uh, most of these books were semi-autobiographical. They certainly drew on her own uh, life experience. And uh, Eight Cousins is obviously about <laughs> a family that had uh, a number of, of cousins. I can uh, identify with that because I had quite a few cousins myself. Um, I, I counted them up at one point, and here we have a picture of Louisa May Alcott, uh, obviously taken during her lifetime. She didn't live to be an old lady. She died in her 50s, but she had written, uh, like I say, at least uh, four or five well-known children's books during the 19th century, which continued to be read for a very long time. And, I think that Little Women is still being read. It was certainly made into a movie or shown on, and or shown on TV uh, numerous uh, times since the 1930s, um, Little Women. And it was fun to be at her house uh, uh, in uh, Concord, Massachusetts, yes. Orchard House, the Halcott House. Her father was a, a famous inventor of, uh, well, he wanted to invent a utopia. He wanted to invent a place where people could live and uh, really do their best and be their best and so on. And uh, he tried to found a utopia which did last for a couple of years. But finally, the people who were supposed to be getting along beautifully and living in a very nice place and being very nice to each other started quarreling. And uh, unfortunately, that was the end of, of uh, Bronson Alcott's uh, effort at Utopia. But uh, his daughter certainly it became a famous uh, person uh, writing these uh, s stories in the 19th century. Like I say, I myself had many cousins because my mother was one of uh, six children who lived to grow up, five of whom all had children. And so I had uh, four uh, aunts and uncles who had children and provided me with cousins. It's very nice to be a part of a big family and to be able to see those folks. Now that I live here in the East, most of my 
cousins are still uh, living somewhere out west, and it's been a while since I've seen them. But Christmas is coming, folks, and Christmas is the time to be in touch with the families and, and uh, send Christmas cards and find out what people have been doing, uh, your cousins and other relatives and friends, during the year. So uh, enjoy Christmas and, and enjoy getting back together with uh, family and friends for the holidays. This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday.